Omniverse. The Call of Cthulhu Mystery Program contains content that may not be suitable for all ages. Listener discretion is advised. Visit CthulhuMystery.com and head to Patreon.com slash Omniverse Media to join our community of fans and unlock further secrets. Welcome back to our live presentation of The Call of Cthulhu Mystery Program, a special charity event where our cast ventures into the classic scenario, The Cracked and Crooked Mance. This live show is unlike our usual series in that it's pure, actual play. If you're unfamiliar with the lingo, that's tabletop role-playing, entirely improvised. You're hearing it as it happened, with no post-production doctrine, which is also to say that all the music and sound effects you're hearing are, in fact, live, thanks to our crack team behind the scenes. The original broadcast was a charity event benefiting the Transgender Law Center. And folks, it still is a charity event, happening right now. If you're able to give to this wonderful cause, head to CthulhuMystery.com slash live and follow the links to where you can donate to our campaign on Tiltify. Since our last broadcast, we've received a very generous $30 from an anonymous donor. Thank you so much. This brings our current total to $1,875, only $625 away from our goal of $2,500. will not you join us in this ritual of giving? Any size offering is meaningful, and with our powers combined, we can light a signal flare for hope, healing, and growth, so that all people are free. Again, that's CthulhuMystery.com slash live to donate to this remarkable cause. If you do, we'll read your name here on the show and any divine wisdom that you care to impart in our next installment. And now, our featured presentation. Do you hear that? In the cruel blackness of night, an unknowable evil from beyond time cries out. What dark deeds unfold on the streets of Arkham, and which unwitting souls, innocent or impure, will succumb to the maddening call, the call of Cthulhu. Omniverse and Chaosium are proud to present the Call of Cthulhu Mystery Program, live! Tonight's strange story, The Cracked and Crooked Mance, Part 2. Chaosium Incorporated is the publisher of high-quality books and games, including the acclaimed Call of Cthulhu Tabletop RPG. Head to Chaosium.com to discover forbidden tomes of eldritch knowledge, so that you and your friends can succumb to the maddening call of investigative horror adventures just like this one. This live production is recorded and produced in Central Florida, Nashville, Tennessee, and Denwetty, Virginia, on lands ruthlessly taken from their indigenous people. The Tamuqua and Seminole, the Uchi, Shawnee, and Cherokee, and the Chero and Hakanataway, respectively. Acknowledgement of the first people of these lands and the lasting repercussions of colonization is the least we can do. Through awareness, we can prompt discussion, allyship, and ultimately, decolonization. To learn more about the First Nations of the land where you live, visit native-land.ca. Thus so far, we have met our cast, two musicians, a architect who's a bit grumpy about the circumstance, and of course... Hazel, who is doing her darndest to uh, step into her first investigation. The house is gross and uh, falling to pieces, though still structurally sound in spite of it. You know, it's a lot of aesthetic problems. Oh, I've just got some good news here. Uh, some very kind donors have very tactfully pushed us to $969.69. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. I love you, you sexy people doing <laughs> sexy. nice. <laughs> so that the person who did that was the winner of the uh the manchester madness book opie it's frosty. very nice uh they, they said i figured this is my only opportunity to do this <laughs> <laughs> you're you are a a true champion i i celebrate your very powerful energy you're you're a winner in many capacities tonight <laughs> Hazel Martin, you've uh, taken an opportunity to peruse the 
the basics of this book that was lying open on the roll top desk in the study. Uh, definitely seems a, a little bit out there. Uh, anyone who has any familiar familiarity with uh, archaeology or anthropology uh, can make a roll on those skills to learn a little more about the book. And you've got uh, some anthropology as well. It's small. Uh, that would be an up four under 57. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, Hazel, you, uh, you remember that name. Pratt, he's uh, a bit of an odd bird. And, uh, well, not altogether on the, on the outs with uh, his uh, compatriots in the uh, archaeological community. He uh, is not exactly seen in the best regard. Some of his uh, his ideas and, and his books are considered a little bit on the fanciful side. Pratt. How, why was he reading Thomas Pratt? Uh, the, oh, oh, right. She looks up and, al and almost notices that you all are still here. Uh, this, this book, it's... Uh, I mean, it's it's in it's in reference to a, a particular Peruvian tribe. I don't know why he would have been looking at that, but it was by Thomas Pratt, who has a bit of a reputation for not being a hundred percent grounded in reality. Uh, that's kind of how we'll leave that. But why would if you cross-referenced it over with this other? Um, and she starts looking around at all the other books that are um, sort of scattered around the room. And uh, there's I, not too many that are in there's... here. Okay, but so it's... someone like this probably does have a library. Mm -hmm. Um, were, I, you said there were maps and everything posted yeah. around. Are there? Are, has there any, been anything marked down on the maps? Um, does it look like this was mid research, or does it look like this was light reading? Well, uh, the the book is uh, it's in pretty poor condition. The binding is cracked. Um, and it's covered in some odd stains. Some of the pages are a bit loose. Uh, it, it, I mean, it has the look of a book that has been kind of flipped through repeatedly, possibly, you know, feverishly in with gusto, just constantly going back and forth through it and has, has a, uh, not been treated with care. Uh, looking at the maps, uh, you, you do see uh, a couple of maps that are, are set out uh, that seem to trace uh, the path of an expedition um, uh, from Lima, Peru, uh, uh, over the Andes, um, and into the uh, uh, the jungled interior uh, of the continent, uh, towards the the southern end of Peru, where the Madre de Dios uh, department lies. And uh, you can you can see uh, elements of that uh, from from what little you know of Cornthwaite yourself. Uh, this looks like uh, this might have been the path of his last trip, uh, his last expedition back in 1923, which, uh, from what you would have been told earlier, it ended uh, rather unfortunately. Oh, this this now this map over here. This is, but this one has his last expedition on it marked out I wonder what he was and she's kind of looking back and forth between the book and between the map and having completely gotten sidetracked from finding flashlights or anything like that um can I, can I check the desk while hazel is kind of map perusing perusing yeah. Yeah, sure thing. Uh, looking looking over the desk while while Hazel is busy collating the various things that she's discovered, uh, the desk itself uh, it's got uh, some nice pens and stationery and things like that in it. Um, uh, the 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 bulk of those components though they've all kind of just been like pushed aside and out of the way. Uh, uh, with it, it looks like it hasn't been used. Um, uh, like, like it hasn't been used really uh, in, I guess, what you would consider uh, uh, any kind of 
formal fashion in a while. Like you don't you you actually notice some of some of the places where it looks like there there would be places where pens could be left. Uh, it's it's missing parts of the desk, parts of the stationery, uh, in in what would have otherwise been nice uh, clean sets of uh, uh, pens of various nib types and and things like that. Um, this looks like uh, um, you know a, a wealthy scholar's desk that has just been taken over by a, a, a frantic madman. And uh, um, she said Peru. Is that correct? Yes. Are there are there any artifacts or um, maybe paintings or things like that around here? None that you can see. Now this is a, a fairly sparsely decorated room. Uh, there's there's the uh, the uh, not boarded up, but uh, um, the covered window uh, leading to the outside. There's the desk itself, uh, and you know the, the table with the maps and the uh, the, the various uh, contained maps uh, in the in the large drawer. But other than that, there's not really too much in here. At, at the mention of maybe some foreign or uh, worldly articles. Uh, Renee's interest is completely shifted. He's very, very interested in what is in this mansion now. Can I leaf through the uh, maps in the drawers? Yeah, sure thing. Uh, as you begin to pull the drawers open one at a time, um, you actually see a uh, uh, a number of different maps, uh, both. Um, of Peru, of South America at large, uh, of every continent, actually, as, as you begin to go through it. Uh, he actually has quite a large number of maps. Some of them are, are marked off with uh, the paths of other archaeological expeditions um, uh, with little notations on them and things like that. Uh, but looking through them all, um, it... it, it uh, you can tell as you kind of pull them out that there's like a thin layer of dust on these. Most of these maps have not been touched in a while. So there's an obvious hierarchy of, you know, what what his int where his interests lie. Uh, obviously, so I don't see any torches in here though. Oh, oh, right. Uh, yes, uh, flashlights, torches, <laughs> lanterns. Those are things we should find. Um, I would like to uh, make a request of you all, though. Um, at, actually, as she draws herself up to her full five feet two inches and uh, attempts to look you all dead in the eye, uh, one request um, rule request rule that I would have for this uh, investigation, as I am the lead investigator, is that. Uh, Nobody opens any books without me. Why? Just, uh, what, well, because I am a professional historian and I uh, know how to handle books properly without uh, damaging them. If the man is dead, this could be his only uh, lasting legacy through any journals or notes or anything that we might find. Um, which is obviously very um, important to the estate. So uh, I would just appreciate if you would leave books to the professionals. She's a professional now, Silas? This was her I'm first professional time. professional historian. Oh, I'm okay. a professional historian. I am, as soon as I get paid for this job, also so a professional an, an historian. Uh-huh. Could have led with that. Sure. Sure. Look, it's, yeah, I haven't done uh, as much field work as maybe some other investigators, but uh, what I lack in field experience, I make up for in um, a variety of topics that I would be, you know what, just, just trust me on this one. Let's go find some flashlights. It's fine. Some torches. And, what if there's more um, than one book? We're supposed to wait uh, for you for each book. We know how to open and close books. We have to form a queue. No, you don't have to. Form <laughs> you have to open them after one, one by queue, one. But 
I mean, I'm not talking about a dictionary or a Bible or anything like that. I'm talking about, you know, journals or uh, historical documents, anything that looks like it might need extra care taken with it, anything that looks really, 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 really old. Just go with me on this. I mean, you know, I'm only asking for one thing. I'm only asking for one thing from the two musicians and an architect who are also now amateur professional investigators. Um, It's like they're almost giving the title away. Yeah, so let's just uh, all work together and play to our strengths. So So next Uh, room? About those torches. Next room. As you all begin to leave the room, uh, behind you, there's a, a shuddering wooden sound of the uh, the shutters against the window. Um, the the sound of wind blowing against the side of the house and this creaking emanating from bottom to top through the entire building. Uh, almost like the entire house is moaning. Don't pain. like that. Don't care for that. And as you make your way into the hallway again and begin to walk down to the next uh, the next door, uh, are you going to go to the door directly across from you or the next door on the right? Probably directly across, least distance. Okay. With Hazel that... grabs Hazel brings the the missing people book with her in her satchel. Okay. Yeah. You. Well, has to be treated carefully. <laughs> oh, don't want to mess it up. Careful, it's fine. Let me know when you're done with that one. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So as you uh, uh, make your way across the hallway and open up the next door, uh, this door leads into a uh, rather fine dining room. Uh, In here, uh, there's silver service laid out for one, basically a table place for one person. Uh, There are thin slivers of broken glass on the floor here near that uh, near that table service uh, the walls in here are cracked and moist this... I look I look at Renee and I kind of at the at the silver like hmm? <laughs> I said no I think this house might be uh, cursed or something <laughs> I, no, I mean jo- joking obviously I mean, just it didn't sound like you were joking. That didn't it's... sound like a joke. Just but look at these uh... walls. Why are they? How is there condensation coming off of these? What? Completely oblivious to anything happening at the table <laughs> behind her. Like totally just <laughs> looking at the walls and trying to look at the cracks and things. Probably yeah, I'm a right hole there in with the her. roof. There doesn't seem to be any kind of a hole in the roof that would cause this. If anything, um, uh, it's. It, 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 they're not consistent patches of wetness, like from top to bottom. It's very strange. Um, I think there is a clue. And I point to the bro- broken glass. What? Yeah. What is it? Who's taking a closer look? Yeah. Okay. Sure. <laughs> okay. Re- Renee bends down, uh, looks at the pieces of broken glass kind of fits some of the larger ones together and and takes note of the uh, the dark uh, powdery material uh, uh, spilled near it this is this is the remnants of a pepper shaker killing he but, was uh, killed with the pepper shaker and and, and it uh, it's it's salt shaker equivalent doesn't seem to be around anywhere the perfect crime <laughs> That's um very random. It's the only sign of any destruction of the house other than neglect. But who why break the pepper shaker? I mean this if the if the staff left the house and they presumably would have stolen all of this wonderful sil- silverware. They didn't, but they broke the pepper shaker? Maybe they had a grudge. Maybe they must the break pepper. the pepper shaker. You, I'm breaking the whole house if I have a grudge. Not the... I think the house is way ahead of you. 
Hazel walks over and like puts her ear up against the wall trying to listen mm-hmm. to anything that might be happening like elsewhere in the house like just puts her ear up next to it and like just really like concentrates on listening to the walls of the house okay so uh yeah as hazel listens to the 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 sounds of the house and the the creaking throughout it you know you can see uh this room itself it's got the door that you came through there's a door to the rear presumably leads into a kitchen or something of the sort um but listening to, to that sound uh go ahead and make a listen roll Um, that is a success. Okay, okay. Uh, in addition to that, you hear what sounds like footsteps, maybe, outside, uh, in the, in the hallway. It's kind of like, wait, I think I hear someone out in the hallway. There's footsteps out there. What? Trying to tiptoe over to Hazel and, like look at her like waiting like yeah there's i hear footsteps in the hallway i didn't think anyone else was here i'm gonna go over to the door and open it okay you open the door uh to find the scowling face of a man with slick back hair in a nice suit with a tin star pinned to his lapel freeze County Sheriff. Oh, uh, hello, um, Sheriff, uh, Sheriff, they gave me your name. I have paperwork. We have paperwork. We are supposed it's to be Sheriff here. Whitford. Uh, Sheriff Whitford, um, we are private investigators sent here uh-huh. by the Dodge Brothers Lawyers Group, uh, to investigate the Cornflake estate. Well, I holster my weapon, if I don't figure. What? All what, right. What? Well, you're here to figure out if uh, Cornthwaite is missing or dead, am I right? Uh, so just... Yes, that's that's pretty much what they are asking us. You people. There ain't nothing to find. This guy fired all of his staff months and weeks ago. He's wealthy. He goes off. He does whatever he wants. Boo-hoo. No parties, no tea parties, no bridge parties, boo-hoo. Everyone's real upset about it back in Gamwell. But I don't want any of you outsiders snooping around, uh, getting involved in, let's say, wanton property destruction. Who's destructing property? I'm not destructing property. I know the type. Objection to that assertion. You're all all some kind of, what, investigator troop? A circus in town? I see instrument cases back here. Uh, we were, and I'm I'm eyeing his gun very, very <laughs> nervously. Same. We uh we were very uh we were asked to be here by the people who manage his estate and take a look. And why are you here? <laughs> I slowly uh have now produced the letter from the Dodge Brothers to show to the sheriff. I take it. I mean, great. Well, every then everything is in order. Uh, look, they've asked you to be here, and, and they have every right to do so. So, good on them. But uh, if it comes down to it, and I got to be the person who's laying down the law here, folks, I don't want any trouble. So, uh, as to what I'm doing here, well, let's say. Uh, I'm making a house call. I don't suppose any of you are horse thieves. You don't have a look about you. No, I, Do I animals. smell like it? Horses aren't my thing. No, you actually smell amazing. Thank you, it's <laughs> Chanel. He's not a musician. Uh, well, uh, it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I will be around the grounds please don't be startled and please don't destroy anything i have a uh extremely expensive thoroughbred to locate <laughs> been a real pleasure i stomp uh, on out of there I, oh, why does why does everyone think that we want to trash the house 
Who would the house is doing somebody... a pretty great job doing that itself? Maybe somebody. Maybe he thought that somebody brought a horse into the house to destroy it. Who would bring a horse in a house? Why would it? Who wants this soggy house? I'm just trying to figure <laughs> out what happened to the guy. Well, uh. um, are there any doors in the dining room that lead? Yeah, there's the, there's a set of doors that lead in the opposite direction from the hallway, probably back into a kitchen. I want to go in there because there might be matches or something in there, at least. Yeah, certainly. So uh, yeah, you make your way into the into the uh, the back of the dining room and get some elbow grease behind those doors and and uh, wrench them open. And sure enough, you find yourself in a uh, well appointed kitchen. Uh, in in this uh, in this kitchen, um, uh, there's there's a nice gas stove in here. Uh, 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 a number of uh, uh, gadgets and and appliances and things like that. Um, although although you don't immediately see uh, like an ice box or anything like that. Um, uh, there's uh, up above the stove uh, uh, a large uh, series of metal canisters for flour, sugar, tea, and coffee. Um, and uh, this entire place looks like it it hasn't really been used all that much. Uh, um, with it, you see some signs of a couple of things out of place. Like, um, it almost looks like a, a, a home kitchen. And what I mean in that context is, this looks like a kitchen where somebody might, might be like the way it's been disturbed. Somebody might be making food for themselves, but this is not a kitchen that's built for someone to do that. This is a kitchen where you pay somebody to make you all their stuff and also keep the kitchen nice. So uh, it just it just has a look like like somebody hasn't bothered to clean it up properly. Uh, I mean, for, for example, one of the uh, the canisters uh, over the over the stove itself is very obviously missing. Like there's a row of them, but one of them is gone. Um, in addition to that, uh, you can you can see um, uh, uh, a couple of uh, rather older wrappers for for foods that have kind of been discarded in a garbage can. Um, uh, and this is the kind of garbage can where you know you wouldn't be storing anything anything in here long term because you'd be emptying it out every night. But you know, the, from the look of it, there's uh, a rather larger collection of discarded things. But it, some of it looks months old. Are there any drawers that I can like look through, like just do like a cursory ugh, cursory glance through to kind of like assess if there's anything useful in them, like matches, flashlights, anything? Yeah, yeah, sure enough. Yeah, you're able to go uh, go through some of the different uh, things. You know, you find. Uh, around cutlery things like that you do find some matches for the stove um uh in addition to that i mean you find potential materials if you wanted to make like a makeshift torch or something like that but otherwise it's just uh you've got a large box of 200 matches Hi. is there any food there's not but there is a rather unpleasant smell coming from uh uh one of the the side doors in here I'm gonna go ahead since you guys have, uh, since you have explored a fair bit of the first floor. I'm gonna give you the, the whole first floor. No luck with any candles in the kitchen. No, but uh, mayhaps a torch, if that suits your fancy. I mean, couldn't hurt. Yeah, I mean, with it, the the this place, it looks like it was something that you know would have at one time been lit by, uh, possibly by candlelight or by. Um, or possibly by oil lamps or something like that, uh, has long since been replaced with electric lighting, which seems to have suffered a similar fate to some of the electric lighting that you see elsewhere. Uh, you can actually see a, a, a kind of a, a, a naked bulb dangling down, and you can actually see um, uh, a uh, small amount of water in the bulb itself. Hmm. Um, I start fashioning a torch while the others. Scared. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna pull out a little sketchbook and I'm gonna start marking down where the walls and ceilings are kind of damp. 
because I want to see if they coincide with anything. Okay, in the sure enough. Above. Yeah, and to give you guys a better sense of you know what all is in here, there's there's a, a rather large uh, uh, fireplace in addition to the stove. Um, there are uh, doors to your left and your right. Uh, there are there's the door you came from behind, and then there's a, another pair of doors in here. Um, uh, in addition to that, um, there are some uh, windows to the outside that have been uh, covered up as well. Uh, they're all their shutters are locked into place. That smell. Do you smell that? Oh, I smell that. Yes, very much. Perhaps it oh. is our man. Oh, I hope not. Don't say that. Does it smell like corpse? Why would we know that? <laughs> Why would? Oh, what? Well, n- the, none the of the you... smell of death is very uh, particular. Yeah, yeah I mean, a, I wouldn't know it when I smell it. I'm like, mm, yeah, mm, death. <laughs> None of you battled on the fields of Flanders or anything like that, really, to have like a, a good no. intense scent of that. But I mean, you it does it does smell like rot. I hand the makeshift torch I have fashioned, or to to Renee, and I kind of walk walk over the door. And I put my hand on the on the um, handle. I go, "There's a dead body out here. So help me." Yeah, as you approach the door, the the the, the smell, uh, the rotting smell, it's substantially meatier. Oh, uh, right by the door. No. Oh, I don't like that descriptor. <laughs> Meaty. <laughs> I cover. I kind of cover my face with my like with my my vest or my shirt, and I open the door. Okay, you open the door and you're hit by this repulsive wave of meaty rot. Oh. As <laughs> opened up. Um, in, in the center of it is a, a rather nice ice box whose uh, ice has long since melted away. Yeah. Um, and you're getting a strong sense that uh, the ice box is the, is the source of that horrible smell. Uh, there's a yeah. number of canned and, and uh, um, uh, semi-perishable and non-perishable foods lining the walls in here. Um, this, this looks like a, a fairly well-stocked uh, pantry, but uh, yeah, the that 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 horrible horrible smell is just lingering in your nose oh. of the ice box. Is there anything in here besides like shelves of food in the ice box? Any doors? Any? Not that you can see. No, there's there's nothing in here. No other doors. It's just the door you've come through straight into this uh, pantry. Well, unless one of you wants to check the ice box for a body, I'm gonna close the door. Close it. Close it. Close it. Close it. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I closed the door. So there definitely was no body. Well, you can go check. That is completely open to you, my good sir. I need to check. I don't... Because if there is a body, we get a check. Okay. That, did you know what? You got me there. I open the door again and I usher him through. Oh. I, and, God. I hold my nose. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go, uh, you going for the ice box? Yes. Okay. So, uh... Yeah, nose held, mashed tight uh, against the horrible smell, even though uh, you can still taste it a little bit on your lips uh, as you keep them pursed shut as well. Uh, you wrench open the ice box and, and you can just feel the stink emanating from it. Uh, it is, uh, it's just, it's just meat, uh, almost unrecognizable. Uh, and uh, several other things like uh, eggs and and various sundries that you would keep cold, covered in in just disgusting uh, mold and and putrescence. It begins oozing out onto the ground now <laughs> that the door has been opened. Oh, we're never please gonna go. get that smell Please, out. Can we be done? Can we be done, please, Renee? Can we? Be done? Hazel, All right. Hazel books it out of there and like <laughs> leans over with her head between her knees. Just ugh. as soon sure. as, uh, as soon as Renee is out, I'm slamming the door. I just lean on <laughs> it. <laughs> Renee is retching, but uh, he says, yeah. uh, "Oh, okay, nobody, uh, human or equine." Okay. 
Let's, let's go. Let's get out of here. Yeah. here. Uh, they, uh, Sheriff Whitford standing in the doorway looking <laughs> real morose, real what? disgusted. Jesus. Why don't you say something if you're going to show up? Put a bell on. Jesus. I, the smell of rot. It ain't, uh, I ain't a stranger to this room. What? Do you like it? What? What? It sounds like you like it. <laughs> oh, no. I uh, Believe me. It's fancy boy. It, it, uh, I don't like it one bit. Here's where uh, poor little Gilda Kerwin had her entire head split open, sprayed all over the ceiling and walls. What? <laughs> oh, mm, I just want to put it here. I make it very clear. I want to make it very clear. I'm not dying for a white man today. I well signed. What? Nice. I, Looks to me like ain't nobody just dead here except some beef in the icebox. But... What? Who got their brains splattered across the... What happened now? When was this? So I, I, I'm gesturing with a hand that is covered in blood and uh, some kind of stickers from some kind of plant. And I, I, I push on through, <laughs> pulling little needles out of my hand, going over to the sink, getting some... Uh, Wa washing it off, rinsing off the as, blood. As the sink turns, uh, it shudders for a moment, but the water comes out. Oh, piss and shit. Yeah, because all the water is in the what ceiling happened? and in the walls. What happened to your hand, Sheriff? Uh, like, Cornthwaite's got a bunch of cockamamie exotics out there. I, I some of them covered in thorns, big, big ones. Did, did you grab it? I, st I pushed my way through it like you would through a plant, mm. uh, but on account of he doesn't have plants that come from this particular region, got a bunch of fancy boy plants from his expeditions. So, um, uh, I, I, is uh, there like uh, fabric around here, napkins or something I can? Yeah, yeah, there are, there are some uh, uh, dish towels and things like that. I'm gonna I'm gonna find the cleanest one I can and I'm gonna tie that off. Anyway, so. Uh, by the looks of your dumbfounded faces, I hear that uh, it seems that you are unfamiliar with the Kerwin murders. Then. Yeah, yes. We're not from here. Yeah, no one filled us in on the on the local color. No. Uh, well, ain't that a peach? Uh, I, I get out of this, this fucking foul room, uh, walking out into the foyer. Well, 30 some odd years ago, Family moved in here, and uh, then Arthur Kerwin, the uh, the young father, he he went he went crazy, and he killed his wife, and he killed his little three year old girl, and he killed his little six year old boy, and uh, and he is never found again. Oh, so. As you all follow him back into the, the main hall, listening to the sheriff's story. Uh, I'm reading their faces as I see this, because I, I want to make sure. I want to, all of them, especially that Frenchy guy, he, some something's weird about him. He ain't ain't particularly talkative. So I'm, I'm reading their faces as I'm saying all this, looking for some spark of recognition. <laughs> as you all follow in the sheriff's footsteps, Make a listen roll, everyone. My listen is poo poo garbage. Oop, just Let's barely see. made it. That's a success, though. That's a failure. Super, super failure. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just just Silas made it. Okay, Silas, uh, make a sanity roll. Oh no! Is that what mm -hmm. the, is that what the percentile dice? Do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're rolling to get equal to or under your current sanity. Mm -hmm. oh, I have a I have a funny feeling that I'm not going to, <laughs> to do it. Sheriff, do you want me to put a bandage on that hand for you? I got I got it sopped up. It's do 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 you have? Are you you field medic? Oh. I've yeah. got bandages. She reaches into her <laughs> and literally pulls out a first aid kit, like bag. I failed. Uh, I failed by the, the way. 
Oh, okay. Uh, oh, no. Silas, you're you're following along behind everyone else, and you realize that the the floor of this place is very well constructed. It's it's very sturdy. Like uh, uh, as people walk along, you can hear the sound of their 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 feet clacking against the wood, but the wood's not really flexing or anything like that. It's just very solid. But as people as people move along, you are hearing a faint creaking sound almost like footsteps but it's on the ceiling above you like not not like a muffled footsteps up on the next floor but almost like the ceiling itself is flexing under feet that are stepping along it you lose one point of sanity oh as it, it almost just feels like there's this this presence skittering along the ceiling slowly following the group I kind of walk up behind Renee and kind of like tug on his shirt sleeve and I'm like, um, <clears throat> do, you, do, do you hear, is there something up there? Do you, is that, yeah, no, yes, no, please say yes. There's something on the ceiling. Do you hear that? I, I no, I don't hear anything. Great, 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 great. Mm. Love that. Well, while the little fella's freaking out, <laughs> I, I, you see the sheriff soften his face for the first time in this whole time uh, with uh, with this. Uh, uh, ma'am, what, what, what's your name? Hazel. Hazel Martin. Well, Hazel, if uh, since you're carrying bandages, I think that'd be that'd be mighty fine. That's a might might fine. Uh, well. Much better than uh, than an old bloody old dish, dish towel. So I, I take that off, and I'm sure there's a chair, something I can see. Yeah, there's there's a number of chairs out in the main hallway where you've returned to. I let her uh, patch me up. Might mighty kind of you, ma'am. Okay. Uh, first aid check. I'm gonna just for the sake of uh corn thwait, I'm gonna like take like. I don't know, my lighter or something, take that bloody dish towel and let it fall to the floor so that it doesn't damage the fabric. <laughs> uh, that's an ot eight under 50 for the first aid check. Okay, Okay. so yeah, you're able to bandage up the sheriff actually very well. Uh, uh... Mighty fine. I'll have you know I was one of the first Girl Scouts. <laughs> well... Sheriff, um, when this, uh, this, this previous, uh, who were the murders again? I look at him real intently. Well, uh, I'd say it was Ar <laughs> Arthur Kerwin. You, uh, does that, does that ring a bell to you? And as he says that, there is a, a, a terrible clatter for, through through the through the door uh, behind behind him, off in one of the other side rooms, uh, in the kind of the lower left quadrant of the house. Hmm. Well, I stand up. Is there is there another one of you stomping around? Uh, nope. nope. My, maybe it's your horse. My hand is on, <laughs> my hand is on Renee's sleeve again, just very gently. Just. <laughs> <laughs> I draw my firearm and I'm gonna go uh, oh. have, a look. <laughs> have a look at. at Whoa. Okay. Oh. Okay. Um. You. There's no need for any of that here. You lead the way. Sheriff will be behind you, out of the line of fire. I, I kind of flatten myself against the wall and just, <laughs> I try not to look at it. So the sheriff then uh, wrenches this door open, the, the, the door kind of in the main hall uh, facing south, uh, and that door, it leads into uh, a library. What horrors await in these book-lined halls? We'll find out next week. Or... You can see for yourself in our video presentation.
The entire Cracked and Crooked Man streaming event can be watched on YouTube. Find it at CthulhuMystery.com slash live. Not coincidentally, that's the same place where you'll find a link to our Tiltify page, where you can donate to help us reach our goal of giving $2,500 in support of the Transgender Law Center. Any amount is a noble offering. Only $625 remain until the time when the stars are right. For those of you looking for even more Cracked and Crooked content, head to patreon.com slash omniverse media. There, you can hear an entire alternate run of this campaign with a completely different cast, but uh, some voices that you're sure to recognize. If you're curious what's afoot beyond the mansion gates in the modest burg of Gamwell, Massachusetts, in this alternate campaign, the entire town is explored and myriad other paths are taken. Hear it all at patreon.com slash omniverse media. We'll see you next week as the investigation continues and new horrendous secrets are discovered. Thanks for listening to the Call of Cthulhu Mystery Program. This production of the Cracked and Crooked Mance is performed by Keeper Luke Stram, Kat Blackard, Caleb Del Rio, Soya Green, Joshua LaForge, and Dottie Vox. Based on a scenario from Mansions of Madness, written by Stuart Boone, Sean DeWolf, Gavin Inglis, Christopher Lackey, and Mark Morrison. Published by Chaosium Incorporated. Find the Call of Cthulhu Mystery Program's award-winning audio drama series on your favorite podcast platform or at CthulhuMystery.com. This is an Omniverse production. It's produced by Catherine Blackard, Colin Peterson, and John Sebastian Laval. Colin Peterson is the project lead, director, and live stream producer. Sound was by John Sebastian Laval. The original score is composed and performed by Ryan McQuinn and Mike McQuinn of Neon Dolphin. Home for all your custom music needs and more, NeonDolphinMusic.com. Special thanks to our Patreon producers, Ben Honk, Nathan Crow, Sean Hutchinson, Zombie Pops, Hoodoo Voodoo, Sean T. Red, Josh King, Patrick Webster, and David Van Pelt. Our executive producers, Big Bad Shadow Man, Jason O'Keefe, Marcus Larson, Aaron Ramsey, and Jamie Lalone and James Nicola and the Arkham Paranormal Research Society. This program is made possible by the support of listeners like you. Head to patreon.com slash omniverse media to join our community of fans and unlock further secrets. All characters appearing are fictitious and any resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This has been the Call of Cthulhu Mystery Program. Good night. Omniverse.